This movie brought us the indomitable Hercule Poirot in yet another murder mystery surrounded by lies, trickery, and betrayal, which are the usual elements associated with this franchise, but this had the added bonus of the supernatural modding waters for all involved, and most especially Hercule Poirot. Now to review points, Hercule Poirot was once again the bastion of believability in this movie. He still affects the audience with his mannerisms, speech patterns, and charisma. As we've seen in the other two movies in this franchise, he enthralls the viewers as we watch him work in his methodical and surgical examination of obvious and obscure evidence before him before making pointed conclusions. But in this movie, despite his best efforts, the producers and directors have him grasping at straws. The story is patchy, leaky, and apt to give the audience fits of disinterest. Movies are often made or broken by one particular act of brilliance or idiocy, and in this movie, the latter was the case. The standout scene in the movie that confirmed the shoddy job done in this movie was when Hercule Poirot was pushed into the water bowl after being hit from behind. The culprit being a slim woman who is most assuredly no physical match for Hercule Poirot is able to hold his head underwater while Poirot struggles unconvincingly. I thought he didn't even put in a fight to prevent his drowning. He didn't attempt to push the bowl away, he just hung his head in the water passing and doing nothing. I mean, I know he was hit on the head before being pushed, but watching it, I was just thinking, come on, push the ball away. So that was quite a sinker for me. And that was when I consigned the movie to the second category of movies with flake out on idiocy or incompetence. Another sound note from this movie was Rowena Drake, the dead girl's mother. She was off from the start. She was a little too wooden. There was no life in her movements or actions. She failed the believability test woefully. There was something off about her voice or speech cadence that felt artificial to me. So she was a very low point in this movie. Her movements, mannerisms and presence were reading heavily in the negative. She did not even give the feel of being a mother and her acting was very suspect. To the rest of the cast, it was way too many pretty speeches and too little emotion. Everyone is giving reckless time to chip in their little quips or words that serve nothing except to remind the audience that they are still on scene. The dialogue often felt stilted by trying to get everyone to say something and then no matter the circumstances, they often stood ramrod straight reciting their lines and that just put me off. The mysteries ever since Murder on the Orient have been getting weaker by each movie. Murder on the Orient Express was so beautifully crafted that it had me thinking for a while after it ended. The collection of characters, storytelling and plot twists were the best in this franchise. Past that, Murder on the Nile was just a big bag of nothing. Wooden characters and rushed pacing left a sour taste in my mouth. Hercule Poirot was basically doing a one-man job to lift that movie. You compare more than the Orient Express and more than the Nile pales deeply in comparison. Now, now down to the hunting in Venice, there is a feeling in this movie that the characters are preventing themselves or being prevented from going all out with their acting. They hold themselves too stiff too unenthusiastic and disengaged from the story like they are bored sick of the script and cannot wait to be done with it. Maybe the producers are trying to present the idea of people in that era being stiff and bloodless but even if that was the aim and that is a big if, they did not achieve the effect at all. Rather, the characters looked like they had been kidnapped and thrown into the set. With the exception of Hercule Poirot, every other character failed to breathe life into the movie. Whatever the storyline and plot plan to achieve, the characters fail to carry it through and we are left with a mystery which is major players have no artifice to themselves. A Haunting in Venice was quite disappointing to watch and evoked no emotions in me and I'm perfectly fine with throwing it overboard. So this movie will be let down gently but firmly at the nearest island because of its past exploits 
Murder on the Orient Express. And that's a wrap for today's movie review, which covered a haunting in Venice. If you enjoyed this, kindly subscribe to the community and subscribe to the channel. Leave a like and your thoughts in the comment section. And if you have contrary opinions or questions, do the same in the comment section. Still the bootleg god on the bootleg corner. Keep it locked in.